There are many reasons why we have thorns. Many reasons. One of them was touched on today. And anytime we come into agreement, knowingly or unknowingly, with the enemy, we end up with thorns. We don't realize it, but we end up with thorns. Now, one of the things I noticed that happens under the skin, now we're dealing with a little biology here. Sometimes you can get something caught up under your skin and you can't seem to dislodge it. I remember one time my husband got a little piece of glass under the skin of his foot and I knew he was a diabetic so I had to be real careful. I prayed over it and everything. But that glass, I kept telling him to stop walking barefooted because I had broken a glass and I swept it up, but I didn't want him to walk on it. And he did it anyway because he just wanted to hurry up and get something and come out. Well, he crossed his legs and one foot went on top of the other. And where the glass was under his heel, where the callus was, it rubbed in on top of the soft tissue. He had real soft skin on top of his feet. So, that glass lodged in his skin. Think about this now. Picture this. The glass lodged in his skin. And thank God it didn't set up any infection. But over time, no matter how many times I dabbed it with alcohol and hydrogen peroxide and prayed over it and all that, over time, I was still not able to get that glass out. And those little areas where those little fragments of glass lodged under his skin formed hardness. And sometimes we wonder why we're so hardened, why we're so hard to deal with, why we have a hard exterior that intimidates other people, why we're hard and hard hearted. Think about this now. Think. Can you picture it? Sometimes, you know, we get callus underneath that protects us, but the hardness in the tender areas of our, of our lives where we can so easily get hurt, that hardness is to protect us from getting hurt any further in that area. And it traps that thing so much so that even if you apply pressure, you don't feel the glass, the splinter, the thorn, whatever it is, you're not going to feel it anymore because the body in the natural has a way of calcifying that thing and solidifying the, the soft tissue around it, which makes it no longer painful. Years go by and you forget it's there. You forget that something is lodged under your skin because you no longer feel it. It doesn't seem to cause any more harm, but it doesn't stop it from being there. So what the Lord showed me is there are times when we have a thorn in our side and we get used to the thorn and the thorn and we become lifelong companions. And we are no longer trying to pick it out. You know, when we first get a splinter, we pick, 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 pick. Sometimes we draw blood because we just can't stop till we get that thing out. Or like my friend today called talking about she had a toothache. And I said, swish, because sometimes I remember the Lord told me times before, you got something lodged in your gum, swish, and the pain will be gone. And that's exactly what happened. So there are times... When if we dislodge whatever's causing pain, the pain stops. And the way that God dislodges our pain is through healing and deliverance. But there are times when many of you <clears throat> out in YouTube land, as my friend Pat says, it's so cute. Sometimes we don't realize that we have become one with that thorn. We have become one with that splinter we have become one with that that thing that's 
stuck in us. Something is stuck in us. That's why some of you are mean spirited. People call you mean, nasty attitude. That's why. You don't realize it. That's where it comes from. And you sit there and talk to somebody. What the heck's wrong with you? Can't you figure out how to do that? Get on my doggone nerves. I get so tired of dealing with you. Just get up out of my face. And people are like, whoo, what did I do? You're not fussing at them. You're fussing at what's in here that you forgot all about. What is stuck in you that you have stopped dealing with? What is stuck with you that has now been calcified in your spirit, in your heart, in your psyche? Because you have come into agreement with it, but now time has passed and you've forgotten about it because you it doesn't cause immediate pain. So you think, oh, okay, no biggie. I guess it either left or after time goes by, you forget about it. But there are times that some of you get thorns in your side because you have come into agreement with sin. There are many reasons why we get those thorns, those splinters, those, those things that embed themselves in us. What is embedded in you that you're not dealing with? Who is embedded in you that you're not dealing with? Some things will only come out when you're totally ready in your heart to let go. As long as you're not ready to let go and God is literally trying to pry your hands off of it or off of them or off of him or her, that thing is going to become a thorn in your side. And you're going to experience pain as a result. You don't want to experience pain. But you don't want to let it go. Sometimes you live your life in such a way where sin is okay with you. Sometimes you live your life in such a way where you feel like you're justified and you create reasons and excuses. You have the can't help it, but you have come into agreement with sin. The ways of sin. Things that you know are diametrically opposed to God's way. But then you wonder why you hurt. And then you come into agreement with the sin. And just like people who get high. Or people who are in love with somebody that beats them up. You come into such agreement with them. That you even think that it hurts so good. But it really doesn't hurt good. It hurts. But you have to create something in your mind to make it okay. Because you are not ready to let go of the sin, the bitterness, the anger, the hurt, the resentment, the toxic relationship, huh? the violence, the witchcraft, the drug, that alcohol, the sex your cravings, your yearnings. You don't know how to let go of it because you're not really taking it to God. You're handling it yourself. So over time, you, you get insensitive. That's what the Bible means when it talks about having your conscience seared like as if with a hot iron. You ever notice scar tissue? You can touch your skin. And you feel it. But you touch scar tissue, you notice the feeling is dull. You're not sensitive in that area. Any area that you have allowed to calcify in your life, and we oftentimes allow our lives to calcify around sin, we lose the sensitivity that tells our conscience, stop, that's wrong, that makes us feel bad about what we just did, that makes us feel bad about what we just said. We have to be very careful because thorns can really do damage. 
And if you allow that thorn to remain in you, that thorn can create a numbness just like a callus. And there are times when you can be experiencing something very dangerous, but you don't get it because you can't hear the voice of God because you are now what the Bible calls dull of hearing. You hear what I'm saying? So you have to be careful with that. And then some of you just don't know. You don't know that something got caught up because for some reason it didn't hit that nerve like you would expect it to. And then some of you end up with an infection and that wound becomes unclean and it becomes a putrefying sore and it's open and runny and you have to go and get it doctored up because you don't even know how it got started, but you didn't address it when you first saw the signs of trouble. You let it ride and now it's about to cause you some serious problems like an amputation. See, what Jesus said in our lives is if your eye offend you, pluck it out. If your hand offend you, cut it off. If your foot offend you, cut it away. What he is saying is don't become one with your sinful ways. Don't become one with your anger. Don't come into alignment and agreement and excuse your bitterness. Don't come into alignment with your reasons for not forgiving this one, that one, or the other one. Don't come into agreement with that. Those are the ways of Satan. Those are the ways of the flesh. Do not let the flesh override your desire to obey God. Because then you're in a dangerous place when you have a reason why. Reasons why, reasons why, excuses after excuse. Then you rationalize and you got all these reasons why you have the can't help it. You got all these reasons why you got to answer your cravings. You have no restraint. You have no limits. You just, whatever comes to your mind, you do. Whatever comes to their mind, you do. That's okay. They're okay. I'm okay. And it's all good. No, it's not. It will cause you to become infected by the spirit of uncleanness. It will cause you to become infected by sin's control. That you have opened the door and welcomed because you got reasons. Well, I need. Well, I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. Well, they said that about me. Well, that didn't happen in my life. That happened in my life. I know God understands. Oh, he understands. Mm -hmm. See, it's not the trauma that you experience. It's how you handle the trauma. It's not the, the uh, mistreatment. It's not the crisis. It's not the abuse. It's not the molestation. It's how you deal with all of that. What you do with it. You can use a screwdriver as a tool, but you can also use a screwdriver as a dagger. Hmm. And you can justify it. Or you can resist the desire to do harm. You can shut your mouth when you want to open it up and let your tongue ch -ch 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 -ch, like a machete. So that's where we have to ask God to show us where are the thorns that are in our sides? Where are those areas of poison, those pockets of poison, those cysts, those, those tumors, those cancerous areas in our lives? that he wants to remove. It's just like leprosy. When you look at Leviticus chapter 14, I believe it is. But I'm just telling the story real quick. He deals with leprosy. And he talks about how leprosy not only breaks out on your skin, but leprosy as an indication of the presence of sin, whether hidden or whatever, 
sets up on the walls of your house, on material, on your drapes, you can see the leprosy forming. And the way he dealt with it was, if you see leprosy forming in your house, you go to the priests and the elders and you tell them, I believe, I perceive that there is leprosy in my house. See, when you expose sin, God will remove it. But if you hide your sin and play church, God will expose it one way or another you will be exposed. So what ends up happening is the man says, okay, I believe there's leprosy in my house. So what do they do? They remove all the furniture. They get you out of the house. They get everybody out of the house and they cleanse it. They take it through a purification process, which God does with us. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So here you are dealing with the leprosy. That's a good thing. But then the Bible goes further and says, after that, if it returns, you tell them, I perceive there is more leprosy and they will come in and ex examine and call it a fretting leprosy. And when a fretting leprosy, and that's what some of you have in your lives right now, what God has to do is come in and tear down and destroy and remove. And remove it all out of the camp. So what they had to do is break that house down timber by timber, stone by stone, plaster by plaster, get furniture or everything in there has to go. Because the fretting leprosy is not going anywhere. It's getting worse. And if they don't get rid of it, that leprosy will get rid of the members of the family and they will end up with leprosy, dying from it. That's the reason we must always ask the Lord to examine our hearts. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lord, search my heart. Search me, Lord. Search me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Show me what needs to be dealt with. Please, Lord, help me, cleanse me, purify me, sanctify me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I can't do this on my own. See, there's hope when you're asking for help. But when you're playing two sides against the middle, and one day you got your Christian mask on, and the other day you got your, your sinner's mask on, and you just playing both sides against the middle, whatever comes in convenient for that moment, guess what? And you know when you're really in Christ, because you got a hunger for it, when you really could care less and you're indifferent to it. Yeah, you better take that to the Lord too. But those of you who are scratching and digging and crying out and reaching out for God, all the help you need is right in his fingertips. As, as close to you as the breath you're breathing out to proclaim or to, or to cry out your prayer. Your help is right there. That's why they call him when they talk about the Lord and his help. He is a very present help in times of trouble. Because he is. He is our healer. He is our way maker. He is our strength in time of weakness. He is our peace in the middle of the storm. He is our love when we're surrounded by hatred. I love that about the Lord. I love that. There is no weapon that's formed against you that can prosper unless you give it permission. No weapon formed against you will prosper. But if you come into alignment and in agreement with it, it can prosper as much as you want it to. There are people out there. I remember one lady, she literally said to a church group, she said, I am not ready to get rid of my anger and my rage. I am not ready to 
release the people who did me wrong. I am not ready to forgive. I am not ready to stop my cussing. I am not ready to let go of my bitterness. I got a right to that. I got a right to it. So what did she do? She pulled it close and absorbed it in her bosom and let it lodge itself in her heart and welcomed it with open arms. But she rejected the Lord and his ways of how to deal with all that because she was not ready to let it go. And if you're not ready to cut it off and let it go, baby, guess what? It will remain a thorn in your side. And you will, just like the fretting leprosy, get worse and worse. You get to one point where you don't even hardly know your name. You don't know who you are or why you are. You are just caught up in your own mess. But the blessing for those of you who are seeking God is there is healing, healing, more healing, deliverance, freedom, more healing, deliverance, freedom, cleansing, purification. There's sanctification. There's so much in what God has for us. We don't have, see, he loved us enough to accept us as we are, but he loves us too much to leave us that way. And that's what I love about him. We can't change ourselves, y'all. But God can. God can. I remember my mother used to have an old expression. Patty, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. But God can. That's what I say. God can make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Yes. For those of you who don't know, a sow is a pig. Anyway, so be encouraged for those of you who are reaching out, seeking and scratching for God. There's not one emotional scar, not one psychological hiccup, not one entanglement in your flesh that God does not have the power to help you overcome. He can do all things. With God, all things are possible. You hear me? Be encouraged no matter what. Even those things you don't know about, if God wants you to deal with it, he'll bring it to your attention. You don't have to figure it out. God knows it. He's got it all worked out. He's got his little schedule in front of him. And he knows when it's time for you to do this, when it's time for you to deal with that. So yeah, ask, Lord, search my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. Ask that question. Because you don't know, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Remember the time I told you years ago? I was listening to this woman sing, and I mean this woman sing. Like I could never sing. But this woman could sing. And I was criticizing every little thing of the way she sang, the way she did this, the way she did that. In my mind, I didn't say a word. I kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Did never once bad mouth her to anybody. Kept my mouth shut. Treated her kindly when I was at church. Yes, I did. But see, God deals with your thoughts and your feelings, y'all. That's not hidden to God. It's all as bright as daylight. No matter how far in the back in the corner in the dark you got it hidden, guess what? God knows. Even if you're not aware of it, God knows. So one day we were all on the fast and the Lord tells me, <clears throat> almost like, pss, pss. <laughs> the Lord tells me, you are jealous of her. Do you know I was surprised? I was shocked that God would tell me that. And I said, Lord, I'm jealous. And as soon as I asked the question based on what he just told me, the Lord took me back to all the thoughts, verbatim, word for word, all the thoughts I had against her. And I said, I am jealous. Lord, I'm sorry. And then I apologized to her publicly because I never wanted the devil to pull that one on me again. 
I believe what the word said. You expose yourself, God will hide you. You hide yourself, God will expose you to the whole world. And all your mess will be out there for everybody to see. So, there you go. What are we going to do? Are we going to pamper our little thorns? Or are we going to present them to the Lord and say, Lord, get them all out. Get them all out. I want to be all you want me to be in Jesus' name. See, being a success is not making big bucks. Being a success is not about having a successful business. That's nice. That's, that's in human terms. But the greatest success in God's eyes is going to God with a, a broken and contrite heart, being honest about what we see, being humble and being obedient when God tells us to do this or the other so that we can grow in Christ. Amen. God bless you. That's the word for today. I don't know if it's going to do much good, but I hope it helps folks. Amen. Amen.